I'm going to run you briefly, give you another an overview of the Saripatana Sutta. It starts off with the proclamation, as you can see in your book. Monks, this is the one-way path for the purification of beings, for the surmounting of sorrow and lamentation, for the disappearance of pain and dejection, for the acquiring of the true method, for the realization of Nibbana, namely the four Saripatanas. The definition? Repeated contemplation of body as body, feelings as feelings, mind as mind, dhammas as dhammas. While one is being ardent, clearly knowing, being mindful, having subdued longing and dejection in regard to the world. Right, so after have starting off the proclamation and defining what Satipatthana is, he goes on to talk about the body, details about the four different types of contemplations. And the body starts off with breathing. After breathing, it goes on to a refrain. Now, the word refrain is not found in your book. This one is invented by some scholars. I got this idea from Aisma Analayo in his book on Satipatthana. And this refrain refers to a passage that occurs again and again at the end of each exercise. And this refrain says, he contemplates internally, externally, both internally and externally. He contemplates the nature of arising, of vanishing, of both arising and vanishing. He is mindful that there is or are a body, feelings, mind, dhammas, just for knowledge and repeated sati. And he is independent and does not cling to anything in the world. All right, so this is the refrain. Coming back to the structure. So after the refrain, it goes back to postures, the next exercise. Then it goes to refrain again, then back to clear knowing, refrain, uh, 31 parts of the body. In the, in the canon, there are only 31 parts of the body, but in the book, in the uh, album, there are 32 parts. You know, this was introduced by the commentary by Vasudhi Maga. The brain is an additional part that was introduced. Goes to refrain and then comes back to the four elements, back to refrain, nine corpses, refrain, and you can see there's a double-headed arrow, which means that after every corpse, there's a refrain. Then back to the second corpse, refrain. Third corpse, refrain. And then after that, after the ninth corpse, then you go to feelings. Uh, after contemplation of feelings, you go back to refrain, and then you go to the mind, refrain again, to the dhammas, and then after each exercise in dhammanupasana, you go back to refrain. You see? After the Four Noble Truths, you go back to refrain again, and then from that refrain, you go on to a prediction. We'll come to the prediction in the next slide. And the conclusion. The conclusion here is a combination of the prediction and the proclamation. Now, if you look at this diagram, you will see that the backbone of the Satipatthana Sutta is the refrain. Right or not? And the refrain is a vipassana refrain, right? Not it's talking about asking you to look at the arising, the nature of arising and vanishing. Now, let's look at the prediction. It says that monks, if anyone should develop these four satipatthanas in such a way for seven years, and then there's a countdown: seven years, six years, five, four, three, two, one, and then uh, seven months, and so forth, until even seven days. One of two fruits could be expected of him either final knowledge in this very life, or if there is a trace of clinging left, non-returning. Which means that yeah, you either become a, an arahant, or if not, then you become a non-returner. But then, Ajahn Sujato, after he has done his scrutiny of the Satipatthana materials, according to the methodology that we talked about just now, observed that there are so many variations in the different versions of Satipatthana. And that suggested to him that there could have been a prototype, an original, you know, a pericope, from which uh, people added or uh, added things rather than subtracted. You know, people added more and more things. So uh, using his methodology that we talked about just now, he hypothesized and reconstructed the so-called pericope or prototype of what the original Satipatthana could have been like. It starts off with a proclamation and a definition, very much like uh, 
ours, but a bit different. You see, the definition in the mula, mula means the original, right? The original, his so-called original Satipatthana. Repeated contemplation of body as body, feelings as feelings, mind as mind, dhammas as dhammas, internally, externally, both internally and externally, while being ardent, clearly knowing, being mindful, having subdued longing and dejection in regard to the world. So what's different from this, uh, this definition compared to our definition in, the, in our Pali tradition? What's the difference? Can you see? Look at the book. You see this one? Externally, internally, externally, both internally and externally is not found in the definition in the Pali tradition. It is found in the refrain. Right? He has put it in the definition instead. Okay, let's go on to his body contemplation. In our body contemplations, there are 14 exercises. 9 plus 5. Yeah? 9 corpses plus the 5 exercises earlier. In his Satipatthana Mula, there's only one exercise in the underbody contemplation, and that is the 31 parts of the body, followed by a refrain. And this refrain is also different. It's mindful for the sake of knowledge and vision that there is or are a body, feelings, mind, dhammas. It's independent and does not cling to anything in the world. What's the difference? Can you see the difference? No vipassana here. No, no. There's no observation of arising and passing away, or vanishing and so forth. And ex internal and external has been transported to the definition. So his refrain is uh, much more simpler. And also another word that he uses is knowledge and vision rather than for knowledge and repeated sati in our version. So the word vision here is also something quite different. Then after his refrain, he goes to feelings. And back to refrain, feelings are more or less the same, mind also more or less the same, and then dhammas are also different. There are five exercises in our Dhamma Nupasana, but there's only two in his mula. You have the five hindrances and the seven awakening factors, and then you go straight to refrain after you finish both of them. After the refrain, you go to a prediction, and then back to proclamation. Okay, that is his Satipatthana Mula. Let's do some chanting. Let's go on to page 12. Asma Kumara would be leading in the chanting. So please follow him. 